In this uh, video, we'll talk about the next group and the excretory organs in that. The group we are talking of is of arthropods. And in arthropods, we'll first talk about insects. Amongst insects, uh, the most standard example that we can take is of cockroach. So in cockroaches or most of the insects, there are three main excretory structures out of which one is the most important and that is Malpighian tubules. Then there are urate cells and the third are known as nephrocytes. These are also cells and they are also called pericardial cells. So there are three structures which help in elimination of the main nitrogenous waste. But the most important of these three is Malpighian tubule. So we are talking of the group Arthropoda, that is phylum Arthropoda. And in that, first we will talk about insects and then later on we'll talk about crustaceans also. So three main structures. And the most important is Malpighian tubule. So let us first talk about these Malpighian tubules. These are named after the scientist Marcelo Malpighi. Now these are uh, small finger-like structures which are present at the junction of midgut and hindgut. So if this is the elementary canal and if we say this is the midgut at the junction of midgut and hindgut. So from here starts the hindgut. At the junction of these two, there are these finger-like structures which are present. So these structures which are there, they are actually Malpighian tubules. Their number normally varies from 60 to 150. So they are 60 to 150 in numbers and they are found in bundles. In bundles. And the bundles would be like having 8 or 10 uh, thread-like structures in one bundle and uh, about 8 to 10 bundles that would make about 60 to 150 Malpighian tubules. If we see the structure of one Malpighian tubule, we just enlarge these things, then this is the midgut and here is the opening. So this is, these are the Malpighian tubules that we are talking of. So Malpighian tubules they would open into the hindgut. So on either side, there would be many such bundles. We are just drawing a couple of those. So these are all these Malpighian tubules that we have drawn. So they keep collecting the waste from the body fluid. And in case of insects, it is known as hemocene. So the thing which is here is hemocene or hemolymph is filled inside. Hemocene with hemolymph. So Malpighian tubules, they collect the waste from the hemolymph, that is the fluid which is in the body cavity, and remove all the waste and dump it into the elementary canal. So if I enlarge this a little bit, say, this is the Malpighian tubule that we are talking of. So now what is going to happen is, it has blunt end and here it is, when it is open inside the elementary canal. If I make a section of this, so the section looks, the section has or the structure is made up of big cells. These are cuboidal cells. They are glandular and brush border. So glandular cells, large cells. So we are drawing this cell as a large cell. And as we said, this has brush bordered epithelia. The inner edge or edge surface is going to be like this. So let me make all the cells first and then we would make the brush bordered epithelia. So these are the cells and this is the brush bordered epithelia. 
So inner lumen has all these finger-like structures. This is the cell. So these are large cuboidal cells Shape is cuboidal. They are brush bordered and they are also glandular. So brush bordered because they have these finger like structures so that the absorption can be propped. Now and one more thing outside this there is elastin fiber, elastin connective tissue. And there is muscular tissue also. This membrane, that is the cuboidal cell layer, it rests on basement membrane. So this black line which we have drawn is basement membrane. And the red layer that we are showing here is of, which is outside the basement membrane. This is elastin connective tissue and muscle and because of this elastin connective tissue and muscle these tubules they show a little bit of peristalsis so how do these tubules actually work from the peripheral part that means from the end part the waste is absorbed now the waste which is absorbed is uric acid or let me write uric acid here. Uric acid, ions, sodium ions, potassium ions and even water. So all these things they get absorbed and here everything is in the solution form. So whatever is formed here is known as the primary urine. Now when the content is absorbed from hemolymph, it comes into the lumen. This is the liquid which is first formed, which we are calling the primary or preliminary urine. As it passes through the tubule, that is through the lumen part, this part is the lumen, when it is passing through the lumen, here the pH gets acidic. Here the pH is acidic. And at acidic pH, the uric acid precipitates, that means it gets solidified. So here there would be solid crystals of uric acid which would be dumped into the ileum or the uh, hind gut. At the same time, from this part, all required things, that means potassium ion, sodium ion plus water would be reabsorbed. So what remains here is only the solid uric acid crystals which can be dumped into the hind gut. So what has happened during urine formation? From this malpighian tubule, from the tip of this malpighian tubule or from the blunt end which is actually in the hemolymph, it absorbs uric acid and this uric acid is present in the solution form. Water also gets in sodium ions also move in, potassium ions also move in. So there's a liquid which is accumulated in the tip part of the malpighian tubule. We call it the primary unit because it has waste at the same time there are certain useful things also. As it passes through the lumen the pH gets acidic and here the uric acid is going to precipitate so that it solidifies and the crystals are dumped here. All useful things, that is all that water which is required, sodium ions which are needed, potassium ions, they are reabsorbed. So what comes here is only uric acid and then it gets eliminated along with the fecal matter. And that is why we said that insects are uricotelic, they are excreting uric acid. So this is how the malpighian tubules work. And Collection is in the form of solution, but finally what gets excreted out is uric acid, which is in the form of a solid crystal. And this is the structure. This inner space is known as the lumen. So this is the main excretory organ or structure of insects. Now coming to urate cells. Urate cells are actually also known as fat cells. 
what they do is they keep they are in the hemolymph in the hemolymph that is in this cavity body cavity these cells are there they are fat cells they keep storing uric acid once they get completely loaded they remain like that and that means they are not going to be thrown out of the body they are not eliminating that uric acid they just store it so these fat cells they store uric acid and this type of excretion is known as storage excretion and why we are calling it excretion because they are removing the uric acid from the fluid and keeping it inside those cells so they are storing it but they are removing that waste from the hemolymph the third that is nephrocytes or pericardial cells they are present in pericardial sinus if you are able to recall the structure of the say a cockroach if we are talking of then on the dorsal side there is a chitinous plate which is called turga on the ventral side there is one more cartilaginous plate that is turna and there are two lateral which are pleura this upper sinus is the pericardial sinus these cells are in this pericardial sinus pericardial sinus so what they do is they also help in storage excretion they store uric acid and once they get fully loaded they go and get attached on the inner side of this exoskeletal plate that means suppose this is the cell that we are talking of pericardial cell it gets completely loaded with uric acid and then it goes and attaches on the inner side of this plate as we know that insects undergo molting that means they shed out their exoskeleton and the new exoskeletal layers are formed so when this turgal plate it falls off along with it these cells would also fall off and when they fall off all that uric acid they have collected will also get eliminated from the body so what have they done they have stored uric acid after that they attach on the inner side of turga turga means that dorsal exoskeletal plate and along with turga they get excreted out so thrown out during molting so when insect sheds that exoskeleton along with that exoskeletal plate even these cells would also be thrown out so main structure malpighian tubule it collects uric acid and then pours it into the hind gut this was mid gut and this is hind gut so these structures are present at the junction of mid gut and hind gut they collect urine and that is mainly uric acid it is solidified here in the form of crystals and then thrown out these two cells urate cells and nephrocytes they mainly help in storage excretion urate cells store it and they remain inside the body pericardial cells they store uric acid and after they are fully loaded they are getting attached on the inner side of turga so when turga falls off during molting these cells also fall off that means that uric acid would be removed so these two cells they help in storage excretion so amongst insects these are the important structures now in the next category we would talk about same phylum arthropoda but the next group that is of crustacean